I was pleasantly surprised when I watched Evil Dead Rise. It takes some tropes from the Evil Dead series, but had plenty of unique and fun ideas that really made it something of its own. It's a good horror movie with plenty of gore and fun moments, but be warned, we'll be covering spoilers in this breakdown as well. Also, if you enjoy videos like this, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. We open at a cabin in the woods, where we meet three friends named Teresa, Caleb, and Jessica. Something traumatic happened to Jessica before the vacation, but that's not important right now. When Teresa goes to check on her, Jessica eerily sits up and begins to speak with a demonic voice. She slumps to the floor and begins to seize before suddenly going still. <laughs> Hi, Billy. Teresa gets close, but Jessica wakes up. Who's the brainless meat? <laughs> Teresa lives and she hobbles out to Caleb, but Jessica's in pursuit. She grabs a drone and puts the blades against her face, and when they begin to cut her, she falls into the water. Caleb jumps in after her, but a moment later, his head shoots out of the lake. Jessica then rises from the water, and we get a really cool looking title card. We then cut to one day earlier, where we meet a woman named Beth just as she finds out that she's pregnant. She heads to her sister's house, and we meet Ellie and her kids, Bridget, Danny, and Cassie. Cassie is cutting the head off of her doll because she's a totally normal child and definitely not a demon spawn. And when her mom calls out, she slides the scissors underneath her bed. Beth knocks and enters the apartment, and we learn that it's been some time since Beth and Ellie have spoken. Ellie's husband walked out on the family, and despite leaving multiple voicemails, Beth never responded. Ellie is quick to forgive, and just before Beth can give the news of her pregnancy, an earthquake rumbles the building. The kids are bringing pizza home just as the quake begins, and a large crack splits the floor of the garage. We also get a nice shot of this wood chipper. This, it's definitely not foreshadowing or anything, I just love wood chippers. Near one column, the crack split into a large hole that reveals a hidden floor from when the building used to be a bank. Danny climbs inside and begins checking each of the deposit boxes that he can find. In one, he finds multiple old documents and photos, as well as a few records and a book wrapped in cloth. We also get a Jesus jump scare. Jesus! The kids reunite with Ellie and Beth, but the pizza didn't make it. Bridget dropped the pizza. Danny and Bridget check out the book from the vault, and when Danny tries to open it, one of the sharp spines on the cover pricks him and a few drops of his blood land on top. The book then opens, and Danny begins to flip through the pages, mesmerized by the perverse imagery. He then plays one of the records that he found. When it plays, it's distorted and nonsensical, but when he plays it backwards, we hear the voice of a priest begin to speak. The man talks about the Book of the Dead, and reveals that he's found one of the three existing copies of the Necronomicon. He begins to read some translations, and once the man finishes the passage, we see something awaken and charge into Ellie. Ellie is thrown into the elevator, but the door is stuck shut. She hears something growl before a cable slithers from the ceiling and wraps around her neck. Cables then wrap around her arms and legs and hold her suspended in the air. Inside the apartment room, we see the power suddenly go out before the door opens and we see Ellie stumble inside. She walks to the stove and begins to make an omelette with eggshells and bloody yolks. And when the family asks her a few questions, it's clear that she's not okay. <laughs> she falls to the floor and begins to convulse before vomiting up an outrageous amount of liquid. She pleads with Beth before collapsing. Danny and Beth then drag Ellie to the elevator, but find that it's not in working condition. When they go for the stairs, they see that the earthquake demolished the staircase as well, so they have no way of getting Ellie to a hospital. And when Beth looks back at her sister, Ellie has died. While mourning, Beth's phone goes off and plays one of Ellie's voicemails, but the voice changes, and Ellie begins to beg for help. Then, despite being dead, Ellie sits up. 
Ellie is burning up with a fever, so Beth and Danny put her into the bathtub. It quickly becomes apparent that something is wrong when Ellie shoots from the water, clings to the ceiling, and screams at her family. <sighs> Ellie then crawls out of the bathtub and stalks after the others with a shard of mirror in her hand. She stabs Beth through the palm and then turns her attention to Bridget. I'm free now. She jumps on her daughter and cuts her cheek and then licks the wound. She points to Cassie and says that she'll be the next to die, but the neighbor knocks on the door and gets Ellie's attention. She jumps onto the man and tackles him into the hallway before sucking out his eyeball and killing him on the spot. She then spits the eyeball out and it rockets into another neighbor boy's mouth and he chokes on it and he dies as well. Beth closes the door and locks Ellie out, so she bangs her head against it until she tires herself out. Beth looks through the people and watches Ellie chase down the other neighbor boy and rip his arms off. The last neighbor steps out with a double barrel shotgun and shoots the possessed Ellie, but it doesn't stop her for very long and she quickly pulls him to his death. Danny realizes that something must have happened due to the Book of the Dead, and they finally let Beth in on the discovery. Bridget then begins to act weird, and we see that the wound on her cheek is beginning to turn black. She hears voices calling to her, and her nose and eyes begin to gush with black fluid, and she spits up bugs on the countertop. Ellie sings a lullaby from outside the door, and Cassie wanders near her mother's song. She looks through the people, and Ellie calls out, saying that she's sorry, but everything is alright now. Open up and let us in, Cassie. Cassie unlocks the door, and Ellie immediately reaches through the gap and grabs the girl by her throat. Beth and Danny run out and save Cassie, but the safety is short-lived as they see something has happened to Bridget. The girl has trashed the kitchen and is crouching on the countertop, eating glass. She jumps at Beth, and when Danny comes out to help, she chases him into his room. She then sees Cassie inside the room and jumps at her, but Cassie lifts up a broken toy and skewers her older sister. Danny ties up Bridget's dead body, and Beth decides that she wants to listen to the other records that Danny found. As she listens, we hear the priest talk about his regrets in summoning the evil spirits, and warns that killing those who are possessed doesn't last long unless they dismember them completely. At the same time, we hear Ellie climb into the apartment's vents. Danny and Cassie follow the sound, but the silent form of Bridget follows close behind them. When Danny looks back, Bridget flies at him and stabs a knife into his bicep. He gets stabbed again in the chest, but is able to spray the stovetop and set Bridget on fire, and she seems to be down for the count. We see Ellie emerge from a vent behind Beth. She then does the Stitch thing, you know, from Lilo and Stitch. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Beth runs out of the room and finds Danny just as he passes away, but she doesn't have time to mourn as Ellie grabs her from behind. I will swallow your soul. The demon lady is about to finish Beth off, but Cassie is hiding beneath her bed and she finds the scissors from before. She slides them to Beth who stabs Ellie in the face and hits her off button. Beth then grabs Cassie and promises to get her out. They exit their room and enter the body-filled hallway. Beth grabs her dead neighbor's gun, and it's just in time because we see Ellie wake up. Bethy, no! The demon Ellie tries to plead for her life, but Beth shoots her dead sister. The undead Danny and Bridget then exit the room and join their mother. Everybody here dies by dawn, Beth. Beth and Cassie run to the elevator and the doors finally close. The cabin begins to fill up with blood, pouring from the walls and filling it almost completely. We see Bridget and Danny then reach their arms into Ellie's stomach, and then we see an image from the Book of the Dead of a being created from the melted forms of multiple people. Beth and Cassie nearly drown, but the doors open at the last second and dump the duo into the lobby below. They rush into the garage and get into Ellie's car. They're almost home free, but Beth drives right into a hole and gets the car stuck, and they find that they are no longer alone in the garage. 
Beth and Cassie make a run for the gate, but as they roll through, Cassie is grabbed and dragged back inside. The creature then creeps forward and grabs a chainsaw. All I want is your little head, baby girl. Beth shoots the creature in the back, allowing Cassie to crawl away. Come get some. Come get some. Come get some. Beth shoots her last bullet, but the monster throws the chainsaw at her and knocks her off balance. It then grabs her and flips on the wood chipper and drags Beth towards the grinder. Cassie stops the machine just in time, and Beth rolls away and grabs the discarded chainsaw. She then yells for Cassie to turn the wood chipper back on, and she charges at the creature and shoves it inside of the blades. Ellie, Danny, and Bridget get grinded into itty bitty bloody bits. Please. Beth grabs Cassie and they finally make their way outside, grabbing the chainsaw on the way, you know, just in case. A little while later, we see a girl exit her room and enter the now gore-covered garage. When she sees the viscera, she screams and we find out that she's Jessica, the girl from the beginning of the movie, and this is how she became possessed by the evil dead. And that is how this movie ends. I think this was a solid movie. The way the characters got stranded was clever, and the way that things escalate the moment the spirits are awakened made the movie feel quick and dire. What I appreciate the most about this movie is that it was something of its own. There are a few tropes and callbacks to the other Evil Dead movies, but Rise didn't feel like it was trying to mold itself into a movie formula. Instead it felt like something new and fresh, while still having small semblances of its predecessors. That's really all I have to say for this one, so if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you become possessed by an undead spirit, then remember to remove the shells from your eggs before you make the omelette. It'll taste much better that way, I promise. Bye bye Big old kiss from you won't fix. Oh, hell no. These are some racist motherfucking zombies.